example and welcome to the we couldn't my guest uh, tonight is honorable member of parliament mr damchu dojila so thank you so much for your time uh, maybe we'll pick up from where we left uh, during our zonka session and uh, you later reminded me that one issue you would like to discuss further is the fact that i asked you if you would be interested in joining other parties this is actually what we heard leaving behind pdp you would like to join other uh, parties looking at the Uh, capacity and uh, possibility of winning the primary round now if at all pdp cannot make it through the primary round you would like to switch your party then the question that i i asked was will there be clash of ideologies will it match your principles and ideals that you have that you have uh, joined pdp will that uh, be uh, prevalent in other parties as well uh firstly uh i would be sticking with pdp as far as possible however as i've already said um in case pdp is not able to make it through the primary round then i will have to i may have to i've not decided yet but uh, in case uh, i'm invited in some other parties uh depending upon the consent of the people of my constituency in i may join other other parties now um some people may think that you know uh that um my ideologies are not fixed that uh you know i i'm not being faithful to my party but i think they should go deeper than that uh, you know um this is not a uh, uncommon thing in any part of the world i mean in the you look at uh political parties in the united states you know uh we have independent candidates canvassing for uh, uh boards and then uh, during the primaries and ultimately they ha- have to join either of the two parties uh, which form the government and the uh, the opposition so in that sense uh, even in india also you have a lot of parties but ultimately you form a coalition so this is what i'm talking here is nothing but a, a form of coalition so when you form a coalition then uh, your you know there will be some compromise between your party's ideology and the ideology of the party that you are joining in some cases there could be some uh, uh, compromise but uh, ultimately you know what we have to keep in mind is the the uh, what your the people in your ex- uh, constituency expect from you now these are two different things la your promises to the people in your constituency has to be within the ideology of your party but it does not mean that they have to be the same so so long as my promises to the people of my constituency fit in the ideology of the party that i am joining then i don't see any uh, problem in that la so you would like to wish to carry forward your career as an established politician uh i think it is too early for me to say it now uh I have a commitment to the people of my constituency. Uh uh since the my constituency in this is in one of the remotest uh, Zonkaks in Bhutan, so I have uh, joined politics in 2008 so that uh, I may you know give back something to the community to which I belong. And because there was a pressure from the people for me to you know go into politics uh, especially Uh, at that point of time we had uh, you know it uh, great uh, uh, extreme shortage of uh, candidates coming yes. forward in fact i consulted a lot of uh, um people who had uh, university degrees from my constituency and i was hoping that some of them will join but ultimately i found that uh, no one was willing to take the risk and take a jump into politics so i had to take the lead as uh, uh you know the responsibility was uh, um pushed on my shoulders by the people of my zonkhakla yes maybe one of the reasons could be that uh, now you're really established mm. as a politician at least for last 5 years or so and because of your establishment no young uh, graduate or no young individual would like to or rather dare to challenge you or confront you that may be the case well uh, i uh, never it was never 
own my mind that you know uh, by my seniority by my experience and by my you know whatever uh, uh, attributes that I have you know, I, I never wanted to discourage anybody from joining politics because of me and in fact uh, uh, you know, I already have a young uh, uh, guy from my uh, constituency who would be joining DPT who has already joined DPT now yes. so uh, I, I think uh, uh, especially at this stage of democracy especially when you know my constituency is going uh, through the early stages of democracy uh, I don't want to stifle democracy if my the people of my constituency wants somebody fresh somebody with new ideas you know somebody better than me I will give my full support la. Yes, but sir, let's be honest. This time around, don't you think people will look for experience in their candidates rather than young ones? Looking at what has happened so far, mm -hmm. electorates uh -huh. are a bit more matured than a uh, few years back. Well, I, I think that is the general feeling, but uh, I think in real politics, you know, it, it does not always happen that way, uh, because especially in my constituency where you have very small. Uh, number of voters uh, first and foremost family relations you know count a lot and then of course uh, you know everybody you know is connected to you or to the other guy in one way or the other so I think this unfortunately you know these things uh, count a lot in our uh, situation in Bhutan and I don't think it will change much even in the next election also so the desired attributes often get ignored? Uh, well, there will be people who would look at your attributes, but at the same time, there will be, there will be you know, a lot of people you know, who are uh, somewhat compelled to vote the other guy because you are related to them or because you know, some of the party workers have, uh, you, know, you are uh, influenced by some of the party workers, you, know, you are indebted to some party workers. So, I mean, these sort of influences are very common. Yes, yes, lots of factors to look at. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. So to move forward, lots of political parties coming up and uh, people hardly talk or hardly hear about uh, People's Democratic Party. Maybe there could be reasons why you're not so much in the limelight. But any sense of nervousness creeping in because of the emergence of these new political parties? Uh, in a way, yes, I'm... Uh quite concerned uh, about uh, you know the elections in 2013 uh, purely because uh, uh, we want to have a vibrant democracy now unfortunately in 2008 you know we had uh, a very strong uh, ruling party a landmark uh, victory by the ruling party and and of course uh, there's a tendency among the people you know to say on the side of the winner. I mean, that, that is a common tendency anyway. I mean, and especially in our countries where it is a very small, uh, you know, society, uh, it's quite easy for any party, especially if you're a ruling party, you know, to get others to toe your line. I mean, uh, it could be done in so many ways. And if that happens, then uh, we could even land up uh, wiping the whole of the opposition and uh, democracy could be at stake and uh, maybe i think there are already fears that uh, you know we are already leaning away from democracy towards autocracy so this could be you know reality so it's very important you know especially for pdp as the party as of now which is standing against dpt to ensure that you know democracy is maintained that uh, at least we have uh, two parties and that at least people have an alternative and choice. Now, although we have a lot of, uh, a few, a couple of uh, parties coming up, I'm quite concerned because uh, uh, the way, you know, things are going as of now is not very encouraging. So PDP... Encouraging in the sense? Um, I mean, the way things are, you know, the, the legal situation. Now, as for the election act, you can't campaign for a party until the election, the, the, the campaign uh, date is announced. And that could be you know, one month before the primary. Now for a new party, what can you do in one month? 
I mean, you, you look back at 2008 when we had uh, DPT and PDP running for the general uh, elections. I mean, we started almost eight months back. With all this familiarization trip? Yes. Before campaign? Yes. And at that time, we could do a lot of things. We could even throw parties, you know, we could uh, do so many things. But now, these will not be allowed. And it's very difficult to meet with people because you have, uh, that time we had only two parties, so it's, yes. it was easier to meet with people. But now, if you have, say, around four parties, then uh, people will be, uh, uh, feel fatigued after some time, you know, meeting one party after another. So, I mean, if a serious party should be coming, then uh, they should have already done a lot of ground up by, by now. But unfortunately for them, our laws does not... They cannot do, do it not, formally. They, they can't do it formally. So I, I'm quite skeptical. That's why I, I'm, I said that I'm concerned as a member of the PD, uh, People's Democratic Party that, uh, you know, now the, again the uh, challenge falls on the shoulder. So the introduction of these new parties are really going to be difficult for the people mm -hmm. and also for the people to believe that new parties are coming because you're talking about two well-established political parties. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, the uh, People are going to take time to get used to their, you know, uh, names, to get used to their logos, to get used to their manifesto and to get used to their candidates, so many things. So it's going to take a lot of time for the people to and as it is the you know the, the society the the constituencies are already polarized yes. in the sense that you know almost out of a uh, 90 out of 100 you would find that a person is either with dpt or pdp so in that case it's going to be very difficult for a new party to you know find any fancy trust Yes. So what do you think, uh, with more number of parties coming up, don't you think there will be more fractions within the society? Uh, because more affiliation um, to one of the parties? Well, um, when I look back, especially when I look back to the time when we passed, when we, uh, uh, passed the constitution in the parliament, uh, I feel we should have gone for something like the you know, election of National Council, even for the National Assembly also. Because after the 2008 uh, experience, you know, we found that, uh, you know, uh, especially the work of the party workers has damaged the closeness society that we had before. I mean, it has created a lot of tension among families, it has created a lot of tension among friends, among uh, so many people. And uh, we could not afford to do that in Bhutan, it's such a small city. But then, you know, uh, this is the democracy that we have opted for. So now, uh, whether we can go back, I, I uh, really don't know. But uh, ideally, looking back, I would have, uh, you know, uh, opted more for something like the election of the National Council, where, you know, uh, both the parties can bring in the president, you know, you just gather the people there, you say what you want to say, and then just, just leave. And even for the candidates also, instead of the candidates, you know, uh, canvassing around for votes along with the party workers, they just go to the meeting, you know, say what they want, and then just leave the place and let the people vote, you know, making a good uh, uh, and fair choice instead of being influenced and being uh, coerced into voting for, you know, somebody sometimes for whom you would not have voted. Taking sides. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I really don't know because uh, the, the party system has uh, caused more damage than good to this election system. What about your constraints, Hila? Are these problems still existing? The fraction between PDP and DBT, yes, it's people very, still uh, mm. trying to find their It's affiliation. very strong, it's very strong, especially in my constituency because I'm from the opposition. Yes. Now, it would have been different if I was from the ruling party, you know. But being from the opposition is even more difficult because uh, uh, the supporters of the ruling party, you know, uh, 
do not necessarily try to accommodate the losing party. Yes. And I think the government has a big role to play in that. I doubt whether the government has played that role. In the sense that once the elections are over, they have to do a healing process. Now, so we have not yet recovered? I mean, that is a result of not uh, you know, doing a healing process after the elections. And after the elections, the government should have ensured, uh, assured all people that now everything you know, it should be buried on the carpet and we should uh, you know, go forward united until the next election. But that has not been done and the people have the feeling that, you know, they, 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 they have a you know, sort of feeling that there has to be polarization in the, there has to be two parties and that uh, they should not be crossing, I mean, uh, each other's boundary and they should, you know, try to maintain their own party in the uh, constituency. So these sort of things are, you know, not encouraging people to uh, do the healing process. Yes. So have you heard, have you heard of any instances where the problem is not just within the people of a community that uh, takes sides or affiliation that's mm -hmm. saying I'm PTP or I'm DPT, mm -hmm. but maybe some of the members of parliament going there and saying I'm from DPT or I'm from PDP and I'd like uh, you all to maintain that uh, affiliation and not to uh, get uh, closer well, again. Well, as a member of the opposition, as a member of PDP, we get a lot of complaints from our supporters that in uh, you know, the members and supporters of DPT are not uh, you know uh, accommodating them and they are quite sometimes intimidating them and uh, the government you know seems to be encouraging all these things so i mean these sort of complaints we get quite often but uh, we always tell them that uh, you know uh, there has to be a healing process that they should uh, you know work along with the the other the supporters of other party and that now until the next election, they should uh, get over all these party affiliations and, uh, you know, do whatever yes. you can for your own uh, community. So in that way, a lot of our party supporters have uh, joined the local elections, the local yes. government elections. And we have encouraged them to, you know, go for the local elections, government elections. And when they do that, they have to deregister from our party and they have to be apolitical. So, so if you encourage people to join local uh, government elections, and they have to re-register from your party. You're yeah. losing some of the members. Yeah, but then we have to, uh, you know, look for the greater good of the community, greater good of the country. Uh, I mean, that's what we are for as a, a party, as a, as a People's Democratic Party. Yeah, we want to serve this nation. We want to serve the people. So if somebody can do that, if our supporters can do that, then, I mean, it is good for us. It is good for the country. Yes. So we encourage that. Yes. So all these problems that you just mentioned, all these problems and complaints that you mm. receive, have you apprised, apprised the government on this? Um, we did raise some, some issues in the uh, parliament, uh, especially when uh, we had some problem in Omrong, where uh, on the behest of the ruling party, the supporters of the 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 other ruling party, you know, were uh, allowed to take part in the local uh, DYTs. I mean, Zongkak, Yagi Saudus, and obviously people complained that uh, because of their presence there, you know, they were able to change and influence some of the decisions that were taken therein, and as a result, uh, it was alleged that uh, one Peter Road or one. Uh, uh, farm road got you know realigned entirely in a different uh, direction so i mean these are were of some uh, concern to us and we did raise but uh, other than that uh, i mean uh, it, it, the government should know that and government if the government doesn't do it then they are doing it intentionally okay. so coming back to your party that's all cleared by now what about candidates? Are you trying to rope in new candidates? Because from what uh, I heard recently, I've been told that uh, your vice president mm -hmm. has tendered uh, his resignation. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, we have a lot of uh, the previous candidates who, who are still with us 
and we also have a lot of new candidates. So if anybody wants to leave the party, they are welcome. I mean, uh, we, we they have the right to leave the party. But uh, then there are also others who want to join the party. So uh, I am not sure whether uh, the our vice president. You are talking of the uh, doctor Jim Singh, you know. No, the, the, the recent uh, information that we got was mm -hmm. Mr. Ishidoji from Lindsay oh. is resigning. And I was told oh. that uh, he's the vice president, uh, interim uh, vice president mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the party. No, I, 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 he has his own uh, personal uh, work, which does not allow him to be a member of the party. So we respect that. And uh, but then uh, we will find a uh, substitute for him. So he will help us to find a substitute for him. So it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, but that does not mean that you know uh, he is leaving the party because he does not just see the party as viable. Uh, he he is still with us. He he you know helps us in so many ways. But then it's purely his personal. Uh, uh, matters which does not allow him to be full-time with us. Yes. You said uh, you have lots of new candidates coming in. You already have lots of uh, former candidates still with you. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, so many uh, other parties, the n new upcoming uh, parties, are actually struggling to find candidates and uh, probably a leader to mm -hmm. lead their party. Now, PDP, you did not have to talk about the leadership for now at least, but uh, definitely candidates. Mm -hmm. And right now, from what I hear from you, sir, it makes me believe that uh, finding a candidate is not that difficult. Uh, it is difficult, but then, you know, uh, we have been successful in so many ways. And uh, as we move forward, we expect a lot of other candidates to come forward. And uh, some of the candidates, they can't, uh, uh, just be with us immediately because of the laws, because of their own situation. So um, we 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 will try our best to get 47 candidates on board, and uh, we are almost nearing it. So we are quite optimistic now. So the biggest lesson that you learned from 2008 would be that you have the best of candidates. In fact, in most of the const constituencies, mm -hmm. you know, you have the best of the candidates, and the current me honourable member of some uh, member of parliament of some of the constituencies, with due respect to them, are today called as giant killers. So, what lesson have you learned from 2008 that you would take it forward to 2013? Well, I think uh, to to uh, be frank, uh, we have to better organized. We have to have a better strategy. And uh, I think we have to, you know, uh, be more aware of what the other party is doing, what the, what the other party is in, up to. So we learned a lot, lot of lessons. So we learned, first and foremost, that it was not just enough to have good candidates. You know. We should have a very strong party. So uh, we will correct uh, all our deficiencies, but ultimately, end of the day, I mean, we leave it to the people to decide. So if DPT won in 2008, if people voted for them, then we have to respect that, and I respect that. And in 2000 also, for whichever party the people votes, I'll respect their uh, opinion. Yes. So, final uh, issue that I would like to bring up. There are lots of issues that uh, we would like to bring up, but in the interest of time, maybe one last issue that I would like to raise is constituency development grant. How have you been able to use it thus far? Because uh, during one of the shows, we have had callers asking mm -hmm. about some of the honourable mm -hmm. members of parliament and not using the constituency grant as expected. These are some of the uh, inquiries that uh, people are coming up with. So, in your case? Well, actually, uh, the position of the opposition was that rather, 
the rather than giving it as a constituency development fund and involving the MPs, we suggested that we give it directly to the Georgs or to the, the Donghaus. You can call it a constituency development yes. fund, but you know, it uh, let not the MPs get involved because in our opinion, you know, we felt that uh, it was sort of uh, interfering in the jurisdiction of the local governments. But uh, I think that the majority thought that uh, you know the MPs should be involved. in Government said uh, openly that uh, MPs, you know, should have a direct uh, contact with the people. So it was passed that way. But uh, so you once said that uh, this is done to gain some political mileage. Would you still stand by it? I definitely. When you have money to use, and when you have uh, you know uh, some power over uh, certain uh, budget and you are able to do something definitely people are going to uh, count you on that also so for instance in my constituency you know we are had that use that <coughs> city g in the first phase for uh, buying a barbet ware because my, in my manifesto in my promise to the people one of the most important thing was that uh, you know uh, there should be uh, something would be done to protect crops from you know wild animals so and even the, the ruling party's manifesto had the same uh, provision so i used that for uh, uh, buying a barbet where i distributed it to the households in the second phase i bought some uh, jersey cows and distributed because again livestock development is uh, top of my agenda so it helped me i mean uh, equal distribution to both PDP yes, and DPT yes, supporters. yes 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 but uh, i mean Although it is government money, so the very fact that I came out with this concept and uh, it directly it had a uh, direct impact on the lives of the people, you know, people yes. feel that, yes. and, you know, I, I had done something great, but uh, what I'm saying is, you know, I'm an MP and uh, this, the whole thing, the same thing could have been done even if the same money was given to the, you know, Georg or to the uh, Zonghar directly. Yes. Finally, sir, if... PDP wins 2013 elections, then CDG is going to go. CDG, CDG is not going to stay there. Well, definitely CDG is not going to stay there with the involvement of the MPs. I mean, we have so many different ways of using the money. If there is money, we could give them to the Georgs directly. We could give them to the uh, Zonghak for so many things that they want to do with that. So why involve the MP in that? Definitely it will go. Yes, thank you so much for your time, sir. Well, with this, we come to the end of uh, the sessions that we couldn't. Thank you so much for watching and good night.